Okay. I'm back. Yeah, I think I'm back. Okay, that was weird. Sorry. It was out of my control. My internet completely died. So let's start over again. Welcome to the tiger painting. We spent about 30 some days working up this tiger in digital format on Krita. And today we're moving it to traditional. I have my oil painting set up. I have my ruler. And what we're going to start doing is transferring the drawing of the tiger over to the canvas. Uh, I, the last part, last thing that I did on the stream on Friday was to grid out my canvas. And, uh, these are two and a half inch squares around the whole thing. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grid out everything. And then we're going to start drawing from there. I don't have my palette camera set up yet because it's going to take some time to draw this. And this is probably the only time that you'll see the whole canvas from top to bottom. The rest of this live stream where I'm working in oil, I'm going to be zooming in on the canvas so that you can see exactly what I'm working on. And yeah, that should be a lot better. So let's get to work on this. I'm going to start by marking out uh, two and a half inch sections on my canvas which is not so easy to do with this really big ruler. I'm actually going to get a smaller ruler. But I will use this larger, really cheap ruler to uh, create the lines. This is a really old ruler I've, I've had since I was a kid. Actually, when I was in high school, I had this ruler. I don't like it that much because it's, um, metal and it has a glare to it. So two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten, uh, twelve and a half. 15 and then I don't have, well, yeah, 17 and a half and then we're done. That should be eight sections. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Eight. Okay. I just keep checking the stream. This is my first time doing this, you know, live in this way. So I'm worried that it's going to break again. <laughs> All right, so what I normally do, so I'm gonna do uh, some tick marks on the bottom down here. Again, I dislike this ruler because it's got glare all over it. I have to figure out where I need to mark. 10, 12 and a half, 15, 17 and a half. Now what I always do is I pick two edges to to work from. Uh, whenever you're you're drawing out a grid, you don't want to just go off of any edge for uh, where your measurements are happening. So I'll do all my measurements first, but I'm going to I'm going to measure from the left edge and the top edge. And that's where all my measurements are going to start. So for the horizontal marks, I'm measuring from the left ed edge for the vertical marks. I'm measuring from the top edge. The reason why you do that, you pick one that, you know, two edges that are on the same corner is because canvases are not square. Most of the time they're not square. I would say 99% of the time they're not square and they're not the same size. Like this canvas is 20 by 30, but if I measure it, it's probably a little bit smaller or a little bit larger than that in some instances. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller. So you can't rely completely that the canvas is exactly the size or the squareness that you want. All right, so let's do the same on this side. Two and a half inch squares. Two and a half, five, uh, seven and a half, 
10, 12 and a half, 15, 17 and a half. So right there and we'll repeat. And this is the boring part. And my head's gonna be right in the way. Yeah, and this is a little bit shorter than 30 because this is a 20 by 30 canvas, but it's not exactly 30 inches tall. It's 29 and a half and the width is 19 and three quarters. So never gonna be exactly the same. Now we'll do this side. Honestly, I could have done this off of this stream, but it took me literally like all day yesterday to set up this, this setup that you are looking at right now. And, you're, and I'm sure you're looking at it going, well, it's very simple. Why would the heck would it take you all day to set this up well the one thing with oil painting that you have to deal with i mean besides my setup i mean besides you know um only having so many cameras so many easels you know all that kind of stuff but i had to account for as much glare as possible like on this ruler it's making it very difficult to see the, t the tick marks So I had to set this up in a way where you could see what's actually happening. And that's the reason why uh, you can see that this canvas is at an angle to you. So you're closer. So the light's over on the left. Well, I have two lights. I have a very soft light on the right. And I have my big um, soft box on the left. A 32 inch soft box light, which I love. And the light, the camera is actually closer to that light on the left and that will help. So you don't see a lot of glare. And actually I have to kind of get over here close to the camera. So I don't see any glare. Um, and that seems to work for me, you know, when I'm painting and things, and that's going to help you not see any glare when I actually get to painting. All right. So now let's start drawing some lines or our grid. This is always fun to be able to hold the ruler with one hand on a canvas this large, keep it straight, and then draw a line with the other hand. I'm using a, an HB pencil, so a light pencil. And the reason why I'm using such, well, it's a hard pencil, so it will only, it'll mark pretty lightly. The reason why I'm using such a light pencil is because I want the grid lines to be on here so that I can see them, but I want them to get away from the, um, I'm going to move my mic back a bit. The canvas is hitting my mic and I'm afraid that's going to be making some bumping sounds for you. Uh, if I drew out my grid in a very dark graphite, it would it would take over the canvas too much. So I draw it out lightly in a HB pencil. And then when I do the drawing of the tiger or whatever I'm drawing, I do that in a much lighter lead, so that's darker and it's easier to see. And there'll probably be a lot of times when I'm going to be in front of the camera. On this particular setup, I think when I zoom in onto a certain area that we'll be working on, it's going to be a little bit better. So let me talk about the canvas a bit more. Let me see if the stream is still going, see if my internet died again.
Hey Thinker. Yeah, the my internet died completely. I had no control over that. Like I just started the stream and I'm nervous enough because it's my first time doing this and then all of a sudden the internet dies. It's like, oh, okay, well, I don't have control over that. Um, I'm going to be sketching out the entire tiger in graphite. I like graphite uh, because, I mean, I could get charcoal pencils and get them pretty exact, but I enjoy just doing it in graphite, honestly. Um, graphite does have a glare to it, so that's something you always have to kind of deal with. Um, but I found that at least the charcoal pencils that I have don't want to mark too well. So it'll be all drawn in, in graphite. I'm dealing with a shadow on this ruler that's really annoying. So, so I can see my, my marks. Okay, I'll do it this way. <laughs> now, normally I probably would not grid out a canvas vertically like this. I would most likely do this flat on a desk or something so that it's a lot easier. So the canvas, uh, the canvas, I can't, I can't remember where I bought the canvas. But my canvas is, I and mean, I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but it's a cotton canvas, uh, one and a half inches thick. I always get the gallery wrap canvas. You never know. <clears throat> if any of the paintings that you do will end up in a gallery or it could possibly end up where you want to show it in some way, like in the future. So in my opinion, it's always best and I need to redo that line. I can't even see it. In my opinion, it's always best to get a gallery wrapped canvas, you know, a thicker canvas. And what you can do is you just paint the edges of the canvas black. This canvas has black edges. And 90% of the galleries out there, they understand that artists don't have a lot of money to, to actually um, um, frame their art because that's expensive. It's really expensive. But if you have these edges blacked out, I would say, you know, most of them accept that and they're okay with it. So it's a bit cheaper for you and you can show your work without a lot of extra hassle. So it's a half an inch thick gallery wrap, fairly inexpensive canvas. I mean, I don't buy, I don't buy any linen canvas. It's too expensive. Um, Cotton is just as fine. This is, uh, this canvas was originally gessoed and I'm totally on the other side of the camera. Sorry about this. Um, this canvas was originally gessoed. Last line. And I did a painting over the whole thing and then I got rid of that painting. I actually, a couple weeks ago, I painted over it. Worked probably, I don't know how many hours on that painting, but it just wasn't working. So I painted over it. Don't be afraid to paint over your, your artwork. Um, yeah. And so it's actually an oil ground canvas now because I've painted on it and then painted over it this gray, this darker gray. Usually if, if I didn't, if I had a uh, white canvas that didn't have a painting on it, what I would do is, um, Wait one second. All kinds of interruptions this morning, it looks like. The good stuff. That's that's an important interruption. Usually what I would do it would be gesso this canvas uh, with a gray gesso. Uh, it would be pretty flat. I would keep it flat. And yeah, I would work off of that. And then I would do the drawing, the entire drawing uh, uh, on the canvas, on the gesso, and then after that I would seal it with a GAC 100. You can actually see that entire process with my uh, eye tutorial that's on Gumroad. You can see the link in the description below to get to uh, my courses on my website. That'll take you to Gumroad. 
And that shows the entire process for a you know, much smaller painting. This one's gonna take a lot longer. Okay, next step. I have a 4B pencil, fiber castell, just any graphite pencil. It really doesn't matter. You know, whatever cheapest graphite pencil you can actually buy is good. Uh, and that's, that's perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on, well, somewhat. No, I'm not going to zoom in. I'm going to do some general indication of our tiger here. And wow, I, from what I'm seeing, I get like just a ton of glare. Um, on my canvas right now. I wonder if you guys can even see any of those lines at all. Yeah, you, you probably can't see the lines, uh, and that's okay. Like I said, this is, this is the only time that you'll probably see the, um, You'll see the full canvas because everything else is going to be zoomed in. I'm going to turn my canvas just slightly. See if I can get rid of more of that glare for myself. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at the tiger right now. And before I zoom in and show you uh, very specific areas that I'll be drawing on, I'm looking at just the shape of the tiger uh, themselves. And I want to pick, you know, whatever is easiest. And I see that the ear, so if I go uh, from, from the top left, one down, one over, the ear is right here. We start the ear over here. And now I can zoom in on mine. And I'm, when I get something down, then I'll, I'll zoom in on my camera, which is going to take a little bit because I have to move everything around. Boy, this is really hard to say, see. Let me show you charcoal. So the charcoal that I have, I have these um, Conte Aperits and they are 1710 Conte Aperis. And uh, I really got these from when I was doing, you know, like years ago, I was doing the Watts Atelier course. And I love these as far as like um, gesture drawing and things like that. But I'm not certain that this will show up at all on my canvas. Let's see. Yeah. That one doesn't even make a mark. There you go. That one can make a mark. Okay. This is a, a 3B. The problem with these pencils is when you go up to this kind of weight, this really light weight, and actually, I can see that without glare, so that's that's much better. Definitely, you know, changing on the fly. Now I wish I drew my lines uh, with with the uh, charcoal as well. Believe it or not, I mean, I've done this process so many times before it's just this is the first time that a camera is involved with everything i'm doing okay i'm gonna get some general the the idea of the tiger down so 
pretty small head. This is really interesting because, you know, when you work it up digitally, you really don't get, a, you know, a great idea of size. Just working on the ear. A lot of times what I'll do with these squares, when you grid out your canvas, it gives you, you know, kind of a, an understanding of where things are. And the reason why I chose to, well, I think I talked about this when I was gritting out things, is you always want to go a little bit larger than you need to pull away from the grid as much as you can, like these kind of training wheels. I'm, I'm still, I still feel like I'm connected to this, to the gritting technique all the time because I, I still fear drawing it so bad and having to rework it a million times. So speed is another thing for a grid. When you grid things out, you can actually get to a finished product a lot faster. And that's important, especially when you're on a live stream or when someone's waiting for a painting that you've been working on. Uh, you know, don't waste your time doing all this fancy stuff when they won't see it at the end, right? Just put a grid on it, work it up that way, make your life a little bit easier. Let's see how much of that you can see. Yeah, you can kind of see that. That's not too bad. Now, the one, the other thing is this, this charcoal will mix in with the paint. It's not a big deal uh, because the paint that we're work, I mean, the colors that we're dealing with and everything are not really bright and they're not so subtle. Now, if you threw down just a ton of charcoal and we did a whole workup in charcoal on this, uh, you would have a big problem. That would mix with a lot of your colors and turn a lot of things gray at the beginning. Then you have to wait for that to dry and then go over it all again. But these little marks are not going to be a big deal. Okay. So also with these, with the grid, what you can do is you can visualize halfway in between each grid uh, square and use that as a checkpoint as well. Nothing's going to be perfectly in the half. Nothing's going to be perfectly on the line. If it, if it does, you know, do that first because it easy, it's easier. Everything will be kind of like, oh, it's a little bit below halfway, you know, something like that, like this eye right here like the area of the eye. Boy, this is really hard to see and do. This is going to be challenging, let me tell you, uh, to get this right. And usually I sit. Um, I've been having a lot of back trouble the past few days. Lower back pain. Ugh, it's terrible. So I'm standing to try and help with that. Hopefully that helps. We shall see. Okay, now that I have that in, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to adjust the camera. I'm going to adjust the camera so that you can see much more up close. So you get a closer up shot of everything. Yeah. So bear with me on this one, because not only do I have to adjust the camera, but I also have to adjust um, OBS on the stream. Yeah.
they, and at this position, you can kind of see where I have my iPad set up over here on the right um, with the tiger painting on that. It looks really dark in your, what you're seeing, but it's not that dark really. Okay, there you go. So now you can really see <laughs> what I'm drawing. Yeah, I just adjusted that line. Wow, that's fun. Okay. Um, now the camera is like really in my way, unfortunately. Yeah, this, this guys, this is a trial here. It's. <laughs> I'm learning as I'm going, definitely. Let's see if I can rotate the canvas to help me out a bit. <laughs> what I found that in order to stop a lot of glare uh, on your oil painting, you can uh, rotate the canvas so that the light is kind of raking across it. And I, I don't see any controls on my canvas to brighten that up, guys. So that'll be have to have to work for right now. Thinker, let me know if that looks good to you. And and I saw your question. Do you ever make uh, or do I ever make my initial sketch in paint? Now I used to years ago. I used to do that, but. I found that I was doing so much correction afterwards that it just wasn't worth it. So I stopped doing it. Now here, here's what I'm doing. I'm going to focus in on this eye here. And my friend Josh said, you know, you, you worked at this painting uh, digitally from beginning to end. It's your painting. Just project the darn thing. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. I'll do that. I would love to do that. That would take this process, make this process go a lot faster. But I don't have a projector. And it was Sunday when he suggested that, so, or yesterday. And I was like, um, yeah, I'm not gonna go out and buy a projector right now. So, maybe next time I'll just project this. But I'm zooming in on the eye here, and this is where I'm slowing down. It's important to me that this drawing here is really good. It's right on, or as close as I can get it. And that's just going to help me so much more in the future. The, the iris, I think, is just about right here. But I do have a secret weapon to help myself out and help you out even further with digital tools. Unfortunately, it's using Lightroom and Photoshop, which 
for some reason I just can't get away from it. It's, I'll have to show you the reason for that when I get into it. But after I finish this drawing, we will check the drawing digitally to make sure that everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be and make it super easy for us to fix any issues with the drawing. There, I was talking with a, an artist friend yesterday. We have a, we have a Sunday group that shows up all the time. Oh, one second. Hey, Paul, see, uh, thanks for showing up to the stream. I, I, I have to walk over to my PC right now to actually see the comments. So, uh, no, do not ever gesso over oil paint. Um, you cannot put acrylic, anything acrylic over oil. It will flake off in like a, a week or two. Yeah. Or, so oil sticks to acrylic, but acrylic doesn't stick to oil. So for example, you could do gesso on a canvas and put oil over that, but you cannot put acrylic over oil. It will not work. Um, yeah, that's hard and fast rule that you should never do. Interesting historical, um, like fact on that. The reason why, like, if you look at The Last Supper by Da Vinci right now, uh, Leonardo Da Vinci painted The Last Supper, you know, years and years ago, and then multiple artists tried to fix it over the millennia, right? Um, he made that mistake because oil was fairly new at that time. Oil painting was new. It was like 1500s or something. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but let me see if I get that I in, right? It was a, supposed to be a fresco and he didn't know how to do fresco. So he just kind of, you know, winged it. He was like, you know what? Instead of like waiting for the plaster to dry and painting into the plaster uh, or waiting for anybody to do the plaster, he just painted directly on the wall. And of course it, st it started falling apart before he even died. It was like, you know, five or 10 years later that the uh, the painting was falling apart. And the, the reason why it was falling apart is because he used both acrylic uh, type paints, like watercolors, I guess. I can't remember, maybe a tempera type thing, and oil at that time. And he layered them incorrectly. So yeah, not a good thing. If you want your painting to last, don't put acrylic over oil at all. Just like, zooming in on these eyes here, really trying to get the, these correct. This is not easy, guys. You know, after being in digital for 30 days or so working on this and coming back to oil for a bit in a different, a completely different setup. Um, it's quite a struggle. All right, let's get the, the nose in here. So whenever I start drawing anything, so our line is here, this, the grid line is there. I go for what I see is the easiest first. And for this nose, like halfway on this line, the, the beginning of this nose is like right below that and to the side. And then I can start with an angle, a generalized angle, which is like that do something like that and then i can see that it ends a little bit left to center of the square so the beginning and the end of that nose and i think the angle's probably off yeah it's not that extreme i 
I could have draw, drawn like this really small grid, like one by one inch squares all over. And that would have definitely helped out. But it's this, you know, these, I'm feeling really uncomfortable right now. This uncomfortable feeling that uh, it's the difficulty is important. Uh, because that's where growth happens. That's where understanding begins. Oh, I guess to go back to what I was talking about, if you want to start over on an oil painting, uh, you have to wait for that oil painting to dry for at least, uh, I would say a month at, at least. If it's really thick, six months. If you put down paint really thickly, six months. Wait for it to dry. And then only after that would you, or like if, if, if you're like a few days and it's tacky, or whatever um, maybe at that point but it, you're you could run into a lot of problems with fat over lean and the layers underneath not drying um, but the painting I have underneath this was really thin it was a very thin paint it was completely dry it had a dry dried for about a month um, and I was able to just get some gray paint actually I have uh, several just gray paints right out of the tube and just scrape it right over this entire painting. I just used a palette knife. I took a video of it. I'll probably be, it'll probably be one of my B-roll things that I use on one of my videos. So yeah, that's looking pretty terrible so far. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not one of those artists that are going to go, yeah, so that's looking okay. No, I'll, I'll let you know. Like, oh no, that's not looking so good. Um, but I'm not too worried about it now. Because we're definitely going to do the drawing check on this. I mean, I mean I'm really going to need to. Uh, there's there's so much drawing that's going to be going into this because of all of the stripes and things like that. And it doesn't, you know, honestly, it doesn't have to be perfect exactly the way the digital painting was. It's kind of like um, book to a movie. I don't know if you guys read or if any of you guys read. I read a lot and I, I love to read, especially I read a lot of fan fantasy genre uh, a lot of um, fiction and when you you take a book to a movie it can't be exactly the same as the book and a, a lot of fans of books you know when they make a movie out of a book they're really upset that you know it, it it's not exactly like the book well it can't be or else you know every time that the character has got a narration about what's going on in their head the movie would have to pause and wait for that but our painting is going to be like book to movie it's not going to be exactly like what we have um, in the digital workup it hopefully will be better that's what i'm going for better Actually, I mean, now that I'm, I'm working, the, the, the most important things are this muzzle and the, the eyes and really the outline of everything. Getting those lines in as well. I mean, the, the stripes in as well is going to be really important. Um, but generally speaking, I think maybe this drawing will go a lot faster than I thought. We'll see. Kind of hinting at some stripes there, getting an idea of the shape of the head through those stripes.
I love the physicality of like the physical nature, the more physical nature. I mean, it's physical to, uh, to paint digitally, definitely, but something about, you know, being in front of a canvas and the canvas is shaking as I'm working, you know, it's scratchy. It's got a sound to it. There's all these tactile responses that you don't get from digital. That's nice. Now, as I think about it, I don't see how this won't be better. If, if I put the time and effort into it uh, that it needs, it's going to be better. What I found if, you know, if you draw something and, and it's, it's okay, it doesn't look so good. Uh, do it over, do it again. Second try is always better. Third try will be better than that because you're always learning something as you're going and getting better. You know, your understanding grows for whatever you're doing. I'm trying to check to see the limits, the bounding limits of where I'm zoomed in now. So I don't break outside of that for you guys. Here's the other thing about painting that's really interesting that I'm experiencing right now. Uh, and that's really what I like. I like doing in these live streams is kind of talking about my experience as I'm going through this. The more I put down the more comfortable I get, the more I know, the more I can react to, the, the more that I can get an understanding, you know, of where I'm at, right? So at first, when you're starting the very first line on a canvas, and you have this very complex painting maybe that you want to to make it, it could seem insurmountable i mean the the response to that would be just start because the more lines you put in does it look okay can you can you see the uh, charcoal well Wow, is that already five o'clock? It's already been, well, we, we didn't have a full stream this time because my internet died, just completely cut off. So until the questions answered, or until no one's answering it, obviously. And then show you what I've done and talk about it. And then, you know, continue on the stream as well, but do a lot of work outside of the stream. Yeah, let me know on that, what you think. Yeah, the stream is having issues, it looks like. Could be, it's probably my internet. I don't know why the internet cut off this morning. getting too big with some of this like it's it's a lot smaller than I think it is these stripes
Yeah, sorry, I don't know why it's buffering. It says excellent connection, but I see it buffer every now and then. Um, it's one of those things where you see that it's it's not working well, but it doesn't give you any indication of, hey, adjust your bit rate. Or it's not you, it's the internet. <laughs> Your internet is crapping out on you or something. It's not really telling me anything. So just working on these stripes here, all these little small lines everywhere. So I'm still waiting on that answer thinker if you are if you heard hopefully you did maybe there was some buffering there but I'm thinking about working up this painting off of the stream I mean heck if I can get the time it's like my stream time is my drawing time but um would you be opposed to me working up the drawing some all for the stream yeah basically and the painting when we get to it. <sighs> yeah, what I fear on this is that um, fixing this charcoal, any problems with this charcoal could be difficult. I grabbed a kneadable eraser and I want to see how, how well this erases. Oh yeah, it goes away pretty good. Kind of smudges a lot, but that's fine. So if we can do that, whenever we check our drawing with my super secret drawing checking method, <laughs> it's not very secret. When I, when I show you that, how I can check, how you can check your drawings objectively and get an understanding of exactly uh, what needs to change, we'll have to use a darker, some way to put down the, the fixes in a darker way. Yeah. See, like right here, there is a black stripe underneath the eye. I'm thinking that it, it's bigger than it was, but need to get those size references down. Such a mess of lines here as well. I mean, got to keep all keep track of all this. And when I draw, I don't, 
I, I enjoy the scratchy line. I enjoy the textural line. I don't go for very smooth, crazy lines all the time. I used to. You know, the shake of the human hand, the, the shake of the canvas, all that is part of it. it adds more interest, in my opinion. This is going to be a fun painting. I can't... I can't wait to start putting um, oil to this. I think you guys are going to really enjoy the process as well. I have a, a very practical process that I've seen a lot of artists uh, kind of you know, rail against because there is this idea of freedom that is wanted when there, when painting happens, the freedom of just to do whatever you want. Um, and you know, that works. That's great. You know, keep your freedom, uh, you know, without any exact drawing or that and get the feeling. And if you're into that, you know, go for it. That's, that's cool. But I'm not that kind of person. I, I like kind of not a rigorous method, but a method that allows for freedom uh, in a different way where I'm free to stop worrying about the, the, the drawing accuracy when I paint because I've worked all that, all that out at the beginning. Okay, cool. Thanks for the, the response there, Thinker. Yeah, I'll definitely be showing you the, uh, the Lightroom Photoshop process. I think it's such a really good process for, for getting objective feedback on your drawing. Um, you can actually see it within my, uh, the, two, the uh, two tutorial. Oh, actually, no, you, you only see it within the nose tutorial. I didn't do it with the eye tutorial. I, I did it uh, myself, but I forgot to record it. Uh, but with my nose tutorial that I put up, um, you can see it with that. And think or let me know if you shoot me an email if you want to actually purchase one of those. I'll give you a super discount. Yeah, no problem on that for as much as you show up. Uh, like a dollar. <laughs> Love for you to see them, get some uh, critiques from you, get some feedback. That'd be kind of cool. Ours is to help you out. So yeah, let me know. Send me an email if you want those and I'll set up a special discount code for you. But yeah, I'll definitely go over how, what we'll do is well, I can outline the process right here before I end the stream. Um, <clears throat> what we'll, we will do is take a photo of the painting. Um, and we'll try and get it as close to square as possible on the photo, but that never happens because you always have to deal with glare. So like you're seeing right now, you're, you're at an angle. I'll have to take the photo at an angle and I bring it into photo uh, to Lightroom first. And they had, it has a wonderful way of removing all incorrect perspective from uh, a photo. So it's completely flat. You can get your, your canvas flat again. And actually most of the photos that I take of my artwork, I do the same thing. That's how I avoid glare. And then with that, I'll do an overlay, um, Actually, in Krita, the only reason why I use Photoshop is to transfer the CR3 into a JPEG so, so Krita can use it. 
I could actually probably just use Lightroom to do that, but it's easier in Photoshop and they come as a bundle that's like nine bucks a month, so, or $10 a month, so I just do that. So you straighten it up in, in Lightroom, then you do an overlay in Krita and you check your drawing there and you, you show any, any fixes or changes uh, digitally. And then you come back to your painting and you transfer all those fixes and changes directly to your painting. Yeah, that's kind of the quick idea of it. All right. Oh yeah. Thanks. Thank you for responding to Ulan. I need to get my phone set up so that I can see the comments here, but it's all the way on the other side. But yeah, this is day 53 of this tiger live stream. We just on Friday, we just finished the tiger digitally. And I, literally I, I worked it up for 30 some days all the way from concept through the design process and thumbnailing to composition sketches to uh, like all kinds of drawing changes within uh, the live stream and everything. I was thinking about, and don't wait on this because it's gonna take me a lot of time, but I was thinking about uh, transferring that entire process to a more succinct video so that you know, it's this, you could see the whole process in one video, but part of me, because that's such a tons of really good information, it will probably be for sale. Okay. I, you know, I'm going to try and take advantage of all that awesome information that like you can watch on the live stream for free over, you know, 30 some hours of recording. But if you want to get the full succinct version in a, you know, a smaller format, I'll probably end up selling that. But that's in the future. But for you right now, if you want to paint a tiger, yeah, uh, go through all the other live streams, please. And look at, uh, you know, how far I took the, this one. It's called uh, traditional and digital. I worked it digitally first and we're taking it all the way into traditional format so oil painting and you can continually watch the process on this as well I'll keep working on it but not right now because it's 16 minutes past all right that was fairly successful uh first day oil painting and uh yeah I, I may work on this a little bit outside of the stream but honestly, I, I probably don't have enough time. So thanks everyone for joining me for the first day of the oil painting. I'm going to leave the setup exactly like this and not touch anything throughout the day. And I will see you again tomorrow. Oh. Actually, before I go, I just saw your comment, Ulan. The, the digital process informs the oil painting process. So even though you're not interested in the, uh, the digital process, I urge you to look at that process because it can, it can be done traditionally, especially the design phase. Uh, it's so important. It, here's, here's how important it is. Without that design process, my um, chance of coming out with a successful painting was abysmal at best. So with the design process, I increased my chances of a successful oil painting at the end by like 200% at least. So yeah, check out that digital design process that we went through with all the thumbnails, composition sketches, working up the palette colors, all this other stuff. You can do it traditionally uh, as well, but it's really important. Check it out. I don't remember what day it is. You'll have to just go through the live streams and check it out.
Okay, with that, I think I got every comment. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.